What's up ladies and gentlemen, Mark Price here with devslopes.com and today we are going to get our skeleton project in place for React development because you don't want to have to keep installing all the tools and set up every single time you make a project. We just want to create a skeleton and put it up on GitHub. So I recommend that you go on to github.com or Bitbucket, whatever you use. If you're not using those things, I do suggest really go create a GitHub account. You should be using GitHub in this course and in your professional development. So what I'm gonna do is here on GitHub, I'm already logged in. I'm gonna create a new repository and this is gonna be dev slopes slash, we're gonna say react, we'll say skeleton, okay? And uh, sometimes people call them seed projects, so I could say react seed, okay? I'll call it skeleton because skeleton sounds way cooler. And public is fine. And I'm not gonna make a readme, so I'm gonna click Create Repository. There we go. And now it's giving me the information I need to put my repository up here. So let's go ahead and open up the terminal, Command Space on Mac to open up terminal here. And uh, let's see where we are. All right, so I'm gonna go onto my desktop. Okay, and I'm gonna make a directory. We're gonna call this React Skeleton. Skeleton, okay, just making sure. All right, and I'm gonna CD into that. There we go. I'm By the way, I'm doing Command plus K to clear my screen so it's not so noisy here. It's really big text, so it's taking up lots of the screen. And so there we go, we're good to go. Let me just move this over here and move this over here. And let's go ahead and just add it. So git remote add origin, and you can actually just Copy your new repository like so. Okay, that, oh, I forgot to do one thing. We need to do git init first, and then git remote add origin. There we go. And there's nothing in here just yet. So let's go ahead and get started, and then we'll push it up to GitHub. In fact, what we can actually do Let's just get GitHub out of the way. Let's just say touch. That's how you create a file on uh, Mac, on the terminal. I'm gonna say readme.md. It's not gonna have anything in it right now, but let's do git status, and there it is. So git add dash capital A, I'm gonna command K to clear it. Git status, and there's our new file. So git, uh, git commit. We're just gonna call this initial commit, and then git push origin master. And it's writing, it's uploading. So if I refresh my GitHub page, we should now see that repository. And there it is. So we are officially set up on GitHub and this is being tracked with Git, which is great. And I'm cleaning that here. And okay, let's go ahead and get started. So I'm gonna open up Atom here and I'm gonna go, let's just pull it up here. I already have a project open. So I'm gonna go to file and we're gonna do actually new window. There we go, come on. Okay, perfect. Okay, there's our new window. I'm just command clicking Command S to save this. We're gonna save this first file here. I'm gonna go onto my desktop and we are gonna go to React Skeleton. And what is the first file we wanna create? Well, it can be anything, I suppose, really. Uh, let's just go ahead and call this index.html because we know we're gonna need that. Okay. So what we're gonna do now is set up the project structure and just get everything up and running. This will technically be your first React application. And this is just the setup phase though. It's gonna be a little bit dry. I'll try and tell some bad jokes so it's not so dry. But anyway, there we go. Here's our project looking good. I'm gonna right click and create new folder. What I wanna do is have a folder called public. Public is the outward facing files that are actually gonna be used on the browser. So remember, we're gonna be writing lots of code in .jsx files, but those aren't actually gonna be referenced to in our scripts on the browser. We're gonna compile those into scripts that can be referenced on the browser. So we're gonna have a public folder which has the end result, the compiled files. And what I'm gonna do is this index.html, I'm gonna move it here into the public, like so. Okay, you with me so far? All right, next thing I'm gonna do is right click and go to new folder and I don't want it in the public actually. Let's just put it in the main top level. And let's call this SRC for source. Source is where our JSX files and the code that we actually write is going to live. Okay, so we've got a public, we've got source. That's looking good. Now we need to get node set up and ready for our project. So I'm gonna open up my terminal here. 
Okay, make sure I'm in the folder, which I am. And what I'm gonna do is npm init. This is gonna initialize my project as a node project, okay? And it's gonna ask you to, uh, it's gonna ask you for information about your project, such as name and things like that. For me, I'm just gonna press enter a bunch of times and get this out of the way. I just wanted it to initialize my project and make a node modules folder. You can fill out all this information if you like. Description, you know. Just pressing enter. Is this okay? Yes. Command K to clear. And if I look at this here, um, you're not going to see any changes except for packages.json. And that's where the actual node modules are stored in a node project. So let's go and look at this here. As you can see here in the React skeleton, we now have a package.json file. Okay. And so you're going to see that this is a JSON file with key names and values. And we're going to be using this in just a minute here to set up a starting script file. But also, this is where uh, your packages are going to be installed. So let's go ahead and open up Terminal again. Command space on Mac to open up Finder and Terminal. OK, what we want to do is install the packages that we need. So if you've never installed Browserify, we're going to do that first. And we're going to install it globally, OK? which means it'll be accessible by any node project, not just in this specific repository or folder. So what you're going to do is uh, npm install. And we're going to say dash g. And it's browserify. OK. And the dash g means global. OK. I'll see what it does. It's going to spin. It's going to do its thing. By the way, it may ask you to do this as administrator. And if it does, you can just put the word sudo in front of it and it will require a password. And there we go, it installed. So we know it's there. Uh, and that's now globally in your global node modules folder, which is now accessible by any project. We don't need Browserify just for this project. We want it installed globally. Okay, so if you remember our list, we need to install Browserify and there's some other packages we need to install as well. So let's go ahead and do that now. We're going to say npm install. This time, we're going to say dash dash save. And what that's going to do when you do the dash dash save is it's going to actually put it here in our uh, package.json file. So dash dash save, let's say babelify, babelify, OK? And there it is. Notice how on the left-hand side now, we now have a dependency section there in package.json. What it's saying is our node project, our npm project here, not npm, our node project, uh, it has a dependency. And that dependency is Babelify. So that's really cool. All right, there's some more that we need, right? So let's say npm install dash dash save. And we're going to say Watchify. And that is now installed. Command K to clear off this terminal here. A few more. Let's go ahead and install npm install dash dash save. And we're going to call this Babel preset react. Remember, this is the preset that Babel needs in order to compile JSX into JavaScript. So let's go ahead and install that now. Cool, that's installed. Now let's install react and react DOM. By the way, I'm doing this separately, you don't have to, you can do multiple installations in the same line. But I'm explicitly showing you the different steps here. So react. And the reason why you want to declare your dependencies in an npm or node project like so here is because uh, you can actually submit this to github and if you wanted to you could not include your the actual scripts themselves in your github so if you wanted to keep the file size down you don't have to submit the code that's already been written by these other packages and then that way when another team member gets your project all they have to do is run npm install and it will read all those dependencies there and install them for you automatically. Now, there's a big debate out on the internet uh, that, hey, some people think that you should never, ever have third-party code in your repository, that you should use tools like NPM or, you know, on iOS, it, it would be like CocoaPods or whatever, and that you should use those third-party tools and then install them after the fact. Uh, other people believe you should always, always, always have the source code in your project that is going to be in your project. So actually submit the code. So that's up to you. Do whatever you want. I don't know which one's right. I do it this way. Um, if I'm feeling lazy, I won't include git ignores and I'll just install all these things here. So the choice is yours. Okay, so React is now in. One more. npm install dash dash save react dash dom. Okay. 
and this is the second package required uh, in order to use um, React. And as you can see there on the left-hand side, in package.json, we've got React and React-DOM and Watchify and Babelify and Babel preset React. Woo! Okay, so our node packages are definitely installed. That's really cool. Nice. So what we're going to do now is get the rest of our project set up and get some sample code, code written just so we know that our project is working. Okay, so here we go. We got an index.html, which of course is the main index file for our application. And I'm not going to worry about that just yet. Let's go ahead and get our scripts ready for, for the project here. So here in source, we've got nothing. So let's go ahead in our source file, source folder here and make a new folder called components. Now, components is the folder that we're actually going to build our React components in. Remember, React is a very modularized system. So you break down things as much as possible. So we're going to be building individual components. And each component is going to be in its own individual file. It doesn't have to be that way. But we're going to do it that way because it makes it more readable. And it's much more like object-oriented programming, which I just absolutely love. I think it's a fantastic way to build applications. So we're going to break things down uh, into small components. And they're going to live in the components folder. Okay, right here in source, I'm going to create a new file. And we're going to call this one, we're going to call it main.jsx. Okay, .jsx, that is the React uh, code uh, formatting for React for their uh, markdown, whatever you want to call it. And so it's JSX is the extension that we're going to use there. It lets us know that this is a JSX file, which is cool. All righty. And the main.jsx is going to be the main entry point for your application. So it's going to be where it starts off and then it calls into your other components that you're going to need for your application. Okay. So there we go. Components main. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a very simple application just to make sure it's working, just like a little list application that displays a list of items with some static data in it. Nothing crazy. That's not what I wanted to do. Nothing crazy, just good old simple stuff. So uh, let's think about this for a second. A list, like in HTML, you might have a UL in the, with little uh, list items in it, LIs. And so we're going to break this up into two components, the list itself and then the individual list items. The more you modularize things, the more reusable they are. So we're going to have two components, list item and list. That's what we're going to be using in this application. So I'm going to right click components and go to new file. And we're going to call this list.jsx. And the reason why I use capital letters is because uh, it lets me know that this is a component and I'm going to name it the exact same in the script file. You don't have to. That's just what I'm going to be doing here. So we've got list.jsx. Okay. And well, that meant I meant that to be list item. Let's create the list item now, actually. List item.jsx. I just created a new file. All right. So we've got list and list item. So where do you think we should start? Well, probably at the most bottom level, right? The list item, the smallest component, the most inner component is where we should start so we can work our way back up to the top. And so I'm going to make this bigger here. And what we're going to do is var react equals require react. Okay. So we are using the node npm syntax here to, or just node syntax to, not npm, node syntax to import another module. In this case, it's the React module. And then uh, we're going to create a list item. I'm not going to cover everything super in depth here because we're going to we're going to do that as we go along. The point of this exercise is to create the skeleton project. And we're going to say React. Dot create class. Okay. And that's how you create your own your own React class. Now keep in mind this is not a CSS class. This is referencing more so a an object oriented programming class, something that you can reuse. Okay. So don't, don't be confused by the word class. Okay. And it is an object, as you can see, the first parameter there is an object and the first property of that, the key name is render. And we're going to return list item. It's an H4. Okay. We're going to say this dot props dot ingredient and H and H4. And let's go ahead and end this list item. Okay. And without going too much in depth, just so you know, the render function, it returns 
This is JSX right here, okay? This is where the JSX comes in. This is not normal JavaScript or HTML. You're probably thinking, what is this? Well, this is the JSX that React provides to us, which our Babel React preset will convert into JavaScript. So all we're doing is returning an actual HTML element right here. And then this is how you inject data into those elements by using this dot props where props equals property. And we're assuming that there's a property passed down to this component called ingredient. Things are passed down from the top down to the bottom components. Again, not going super in depth here, but that's a brief overview of what we're, what we're doing. So it's not like you're learning a new language here on the fly without me telling you anything. And then what we're gonna do is good old node syntax, module.exports equals list item. Now there's different ways of building React modules, like you could put them all in the same file and manage your exports differently here, but this I think is the absolute best way to do it. Break things into their own files, it's the most readable code. This is how I would do it on any other programming language or platform. Sometimes web developers do really nasty stuff because they can. I think you should keep your code clean, segregate it into files, modularize it just like this. Be, be a good coder and make your future uh, coders who look at your code happy. Don't make them angry at you. Let's take a look here. Okay, that looks good. So list item. So we're, we just created a list item and each list item has uh, a heading in it. Okay, and then we have the list itself. Let's take a look at that. This is list.jsx, okay? Var react equals require react. So every, every file that you need to use react in, you need to import it. And this is interesting. We're gonna actually import our list item list has to have list items. So that's why we work from the bottom down, right? We couldn't have made the list first because we didn't have list items. Let's import that now. And if you remember from the other video, if you watched it, hopefully you did, this is how you import non, uh, non node module, non NPM modules. That's the word I'm looking for. Non NPM modules. When you're creating your own modules, this is how you import it with the dot slash. And since since it's .jsx, we can't just do it like this, okay? Because this is looking for a JavaScript file, but we're not using JavaScript, we're using JSX. So you have to put the extension here. So there's our file. It's gonna find it because it's in the same directory. And uh, now we've imported our list item. So now we need some ingredients to show on the screen. Okay, this is our data source. Now, it's you probably wouldn't put it in these files, your data source here, because this is coming from a data source. So this would probably live somewhere else in the real world, but this is just test data, okay? and it's fine for right now. And it's okay to build your applications with test data first before you move on to like talking to a server. Okay, oops, so there we go. And I'm just giving it IDs here just to, to indicate that there's more, more than one items here. Later on, you're gonna learn that uh, React likes unique identifiers for lists and such. Okay, this is cheese. Okay, one more ingredient. Let's say ID is gonna be three and the text what should we do we got ham cheese let's say potatoes all right so there's our data it's just it's a list of objects each object has a name and an id or in our case we're calling it text here let's say var list equals react dot create class and maybe you're watching this and you're getting syntax errors or things like that make sure in your code files here if they're dot jsx here at the bottom You've got your presets here. In our case, we're using Babel ES6 JavaScript. I found that is the one that has the best formatting. Uh, so uh, there's other ones too. I believe there's other packages that might have it on here. We're not gonna look at it. Anyway, use that, uh, that package there, okay? Render function, just like we did before. Var list items equals ingredients dot map. Dot map, of course, is a JavaScript function. If you're familiar with JavaScript, you would know how to use this here. And we're going to return list item where the key, oops, where the key equals item.id. So we're going to give it a specialized key to keep it unique. Again, React likes unique lists by the, the way that it's built. It, it really wants you to put IDs in there if, if at all possible. And there's different ways of doing that, which I'll show you in this course. And we're going to pass an item.text. And again, you're probably thinking, what is going on here? And just to give it a brief overview, you're like, it's not very brief, man. This video is long. Well, just wait till you get to the other videos. Uh, so we're gonna return a list item and we're gonna pass in the ID here into the key and ingredients is gonna be item.txt. If you remember from list item.jsx, we are assuming that someone's passing us in an ingredient here. Okay, see that right there? There's an ingredient. And so list item, in fact, 
this should not be ingredients, this should be ingredient because it's expecting the word ingredient. We're gonna pass in the item.txt. So what's happening is we're using the javascript.map function where you pass in an item and then for each of the items in that function, it's going to return a list item. And React knows how to handle all this. So this is, you'll be working with .map a lot when you're dealing with lists in React. And now we need the actual HTML. And the reason why I actually put the HTML in the parentheses is just to show, and it's not HTML, it's JSX. It's just to show that there's a beginning and an end. You don't have to put those parentheses there. It's very common to put them there though. This is gonna be list items. So we're turning a whole list of list items there. Okay, oops, there we go. That is looking good. Let's go ahead and say module.exports equals list. So in this case now, we have created a bunch of list items, one for each ingredient, and that is now part of our list, and we are exporting that list. So now we've got a list item, script file.jsx, and we've got a list. Okay, we're getting closer. Let's go to main.jsx now. Okay, remember, if you remember, this is our uh, entry point for our application. So let's go ahead and get it going. Var react equals require react. And if you've been wondering, when are we gonna use React DOM? Well, right now. React DOM, by the way, you can name these, these are just variables, of course, by the var keyword, and I'm just naming them all with capital letters, just like you might do in, in another programming language where you have a class, okay? You typically start the class off with a capital letter. That's all I'm doing here. And we're gonna say require react dash DOM. That has to be the exact name of the NPM package. And now we need our list, require.components slash list.jsx. Okay, so the reason why we need React DOM now is now that we are ready to start showing something on the screen, we have to work with the React DOM, which will render it to the screen. So let's do that now. React DOM dot render, and we're gonna put list here, all right, comma, and we're gonna say, it's gonna be document dot get element by ID. Of course, this is standard DOM manipulation that you would use with JavaScript. So we're gonna get element by ID. It's not even jQuery, just plain old, plain Jane uh, JavaScript and uh, to grab DOM elements. And this is gonna be ingredients. So what we're saying here is, hey, grab the DOM and let's insert our list here. And where are we gonna put it? We're gonna put it in the ID in our HTML code called ingredients. And we're gonna replace it with whatever is in this list here. So that's looking good to me. So now back in the world of index.html here in our public facing folder here, okay? This is where we actually need to put in the code. So doc type, let's just do our HTML file. HTML, HTML, say head. And I don't have any autofillers on right now. I, I find that if I use autofillers when I'm teaching, people get really confused really fast. So if that bothers you, you can feel free to speed me up to 2.0 speed on the video, and I'll talk really fast just like this. Of course, if you had it sped up and I just talked like that, I'd be talking out 4x speed. You're like, when does this guy shut up? The answer is never, because uh, it's my job. So body, this is just standard HTML. Ingredients, okay. Remember, that's the ID that I said we were gonna find in our main.jsx, okay. If it wants to load, it's going kind of slow here. Ingredients, there it is, yep. All right, so there's our ingredients, that looks good. Let's go ahead and just end the div just for syntax sake here. And cool, so that is in and working. Let's end the body and end the HTML. Oops, HTML, HTML. So all we've done is created a simple HTML file, okay? And we've said, hey, here in the ingredients, uh, we're gonna replace this ID with our list. Now, maybe you're, now asking the question, well, how do we finally get our code into here? Well, remember all those packages we installed? We can't just import a JSX file. I can't just say import script JSX because it doesn't exist. What we have to do is we have to get all of these JSX files and then we have to convert them into a single JavaScript file that can be read uh, on the browser using all those tools that we installed. So let's do that now. What I'm gonna do is in the public folder, I'm gonna right click it and go to new folder and we're gonna call this JS, JS for JavaScript. And inside this JS folder, I'm gonna do a new file. And we're gonna call this main.js. So this main.js is gonna be the file that holds all the code for our application. And our nice little tools are gonna to wrap it all up and put it in there for us. And that's what we're actually gonna import. So let's do that now. 
So let's go over to index.html and right above the end body tag, okay, let's just go ahead and put a script in here. Source equals, and it's going to be js slash main.js. And right now, it's not going to do anything because it doesn't really have anything in it. But now we're going to use our tools. How cool is that? So let's recap though, real quick, real quick. So we've got our list item over here. We've got the list item that has the list items in it. We're exporting it over here into our list. Our list is creating a list item for each of these ingredients. And that's what's coming into our list itself. And then our main.jsx is our entry point. This is where everything gets started and inserted into your uh, DOM. Okay. And then main.js will be the script file that everything goes into in our public folder. So we can actually use it on the browser and index.html of course is your index.html where we are importing that script. Now, all we need to do is compile all this code into main.js. So it actually works on the browser. So let's do that now. So how do we get it working? Well, we've got to compile it. So we need to set up some settings here in our package.json. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to tell our tools to do some work for us so we can actually compile this stuff. Okay. Do you see the section up here in your package.json entitled scripts? Okay. Well, one of the settings, the keys here that you can do is a starting script like so. And this will be a script that starts that it runs when your application first runs. And so that's what we want to do is we add a start here. You can delete that test one if you want. It's not necessary. And this is what we're going to do. We're going to use the watchify package so we can watch those changes. Okay. And it's going to be in source slash main.jsx. So we're going to watch main.jsx. Okay. It's going to continually watch that for changes. And what's cool is maybe you're thinking, well, do I have to add every single component manually that I'm going to be using? The answer is no. Whatever you put in your main starting file, it's going to import the dependencies and import the dependencies so forth as needed until there's no more dependencies. And it's going to take everything that you need all for you thinking, do all, doing all the thinking for you. And it's going to compile that into your code for you. So we only need to imp to put here the main starting point of your JSX application, which is really cool. And here's some export options that we need to enter here the dash V and the dash T very common uh, export options with a lot of these NPM packages. You can read more about that in the documentation. And we're going to go to Babelify presets. So we're going to set a preset on Babelify and we're going to say react. So what we're saying here is, Hey, and I'm going to make the spacing here uh, perfect. So there's no errors. So I do have spaces uh, before this and in these brackets here as well too. And I'll put another space there. So what we're saying is, Hey, use Babelify, but use the react preset. So it knows how to convert your code, your, your JSX code into JavaScript and dash O for output. We're going to, output it to public slash JS slash main dot JS. Let me put a comma there because this is a JavaScript object. Okay. So to recap, watchify is going to keep watching main dot JS JSX for changes. And once there's a change on main dot JSX, we are going to use Babelify and the react preset to take that code and all its dependencies and convert it into readable JavaScript. And that readable, readable JavaScript is going to go into public slash JS slash main dot JS. Okay. Pretty cool. If I do say so myself and I do now let's go ahead and go into our terminal here. Make sure you're still in your folder. And what we are going to do now is we are going to run our program. So all you have to do is NPM start. And if you notice there, it's not doing anything, but then it did. It took 4.85 seconds to convert the code. It actually, what's really cool is this is still running. Okay. So if I go over to my, let's put this window here and this window here, if I go over to my main.jsx like so, and let's say I call this list a and list a here, and then I save it. Okay. I just did command S notice how it converted it over here on the right hand side. And it looks like it only converted the changes that I needed because it was much quicker this time. So as you make changes, it instantly compiles it. So you never have to do all this importing and stuff again, like we just did just that one time. I'm going to command Z command Z to undo, let it recompile, which it just did. Now, if everything worked correctly, if we go look at our main.js, it should be filled with stuff. And sure enough, it is. 
Look at all this stuff here. This was empty before. All this cool stuff that was put in here, you don't even need to read this file. It's gonna be very convoluted and very complex, but basically it took everything that you needed and put it here in main.js so you can use it in your application. Now the real question to answer is, is our application working? Let's go ahead and open it up in a browser. So I'm gonna minimize my screen here, go into React Skeleton, go into Public, and let's go ahead and open index.html. Let's open it in Google Chrome. Look at that. We have a list that is showing on our screen, three list items in HTML, uh, the, you know, the UL and the LIs, and uh, looks good. Well, I don't think we did UL, I think we just did LIs, but uh, it looks real good. And it looks like our code is working here. So, okay, so are you confused? Probably, that's okay though. This, this is good stuff, we have a skeleton now. Now all you ever have to do Okay, if you use the skeleton, is implement, implement new components into your components folder, okay? And you'll save them, and as you need them, and, and as you use them, they will be compiled automatically, so long as you have your terminal running. If you command control C to kill your node here, uh, it's dead and it's not gonna recompile. So remember, npm start is gonna take your code and it's gonna compile it into readable JavaScript. And as you make changes, it is going to make those changes for you on the fly, which is what you want. So leave this terminal window open and running. And that's all you have to do to be up and running with React. You did just build your first React application. So grab your hand and pat yourself on the shoulder. If you don't understand everything that happened, that's okay, because I didn't explain everything that happened. We're gonna do that in the next video when you build your real first application. So here's your framework and just to Finish everything off here, control C to kill the terminal here. Let's get this up on GitHub, so git status. And I am going to include the uh, modules themselves. So git add dash A, just because I'm being lazy and I don't want to do a git ignore file and ignore all those files. Git add dash capital A is gonna add all those folders and all their sub files, et cetera. It's taking a while because there's lots of packages. Again, this is a choice you didn't have to. If you wanna keep the size of your repository down, don't add these files, add a git ignore on node modules and then do your git commit. So git status, let's make sure it's all green, which it is, git commit dash m, dash m, and we're gonna say react skeleton. Pretty cool, there it is. Boom, command k to clear and git push origin master. And so our application is done, our skeleton is done. It is writing it up to github.com. And let's make sure it is there. I always just like to do this check just in case. So github.com. And if you have any questions, you can join me in the chat room. Uh, if you have any questions like with NPM or installing things or you're getting errors, again, join the chat room. I can help you out there. There's lots of help on the internet as well too. Let's look at React Skeleton here, and there it is. Everything that we've done is there on GitHub. And of course, you can use this repository if you want as well. So that's it for now. We've got things set up. Mark Price here, devslopes.com. Sorry I'm talking so much. This is really important and can be very, very confusing, especially to new people. So if you're very advanced, just speed me up and you can listen to me go fast. If, you're, if this is great for you, then let's keep on trucking. And remember to get your free live help, go to devslopes.com and click on chat room. I'm there all the time, as well as a huge community of other students.